I, very early age, I wanted to become a painter, specifically a, a Renaissance painter, actually, when I was very young. And uh, later I discovered, okay, I wanted to become something art-related, but it wasn't a painter. I realized, I mean, the type of art I was going to make didn't exist in my childhood. So, <laughs> so it was a fast-forward journey from uh, wanting to become a Renaissance artist and having a very modernist education as a painter to a uh, you know, contemporary artist. You are driving me insane. Uh, I try to then learn how to make arts uh, while being nomadic, while being in a new place. Otherwise, while then later I learned how to make it while being in a new place in a very short time. And this was age came as challenges. So, uh, and I realized I should integrate this into my thinking. You know, I cannot just uh, start with a canvas or a studio. Uh, when that's necessary, it can come after. So I can start with the ideas. So I start with the ideas and they uh, appear in any medium possible. And they appeared in any kind of collaboration possible over the years. So it became more and more conceptual in that sense, uh, but in today's sense. Uh, conceptual in a way that, that is responding to these issues, uh, it's responding to the complexities of the art world, but the, the, also the world general we live in. You know? So that's the process. A first concept and ideas, then I choose to, uh, the best fitting med medium for it. And if I can execute it myself, I do. Otherwise, I do collaboration. Actually, you know, in this work, especially in the city, in this exhibition, I had maybe I come across to one story, and I wonder if there is a similar story elsewhere happening. And it's so quick you can find out than so many other stories. So maybe I have, I uh, unconsciously collect those stories. I come across in the news, hear from somebody, and then I always wonder. Uh, Probably the same thing happens completely the other, at the other side of the world. And that's usually what happens. So people are like, how do you find the stories? It's just, I just come across one and two and then the rest. And by talking to people, by making research, it's so easy to find. Like when you have a very focused uh, interest in something specific, it's very easy to find more and more of that. I'm sure there are a lot more. But uh, after a short time, you already have the same story, similar story from uh, multiple countries. It's a university, self-initiated university in collaboration with institutions, uh, art institutions, uh, uh, universities and NGOs uh, that they self-run uh, their program and they all have academic backgrounds back in their countries in their languages, where they come from, but they're unable to practice because they don't have the legal documents, uh, legal permissions or documents where they arrive in those countries. So we immediately acknowledge these people as academics, uh, every member, uh, respected academics, and to be paid academics. Even it's illegal to pay them uh, normally because they're undocumented. So those institutions find ways uh, to work with them and long term and also ready to give away the control to them to suffer. So this is how it works so far. Yeah, next month I'm doing a show in Baku, Azerbaijan, and uh, with two new works. And uh, that invitation came with the, on the basis of making a site-specific work. So uh, one of them is site-specific, another work is really another issue that happens all around the world. And uh, after that, I reactivate the work by Kunin's Barricade, which I've done so far five versions of it in different museums and countries. Um, and now we will do a new version in Amsterdam and next year in the US. And yeah, rest of the year, some group shows and other projects coming up.